be once again presenting uh, our monthly updates to the PPCS product. Um, just a quick overview on eCapital for those of you who are new to the call. Uh, you know, eCapital is based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, really a firm dedicated to business analytics, um, you know, high focus there. Uh, we have over 250 EPM and business intelligence customers uh, in our region, um, and we are Oracle Gold sponsored. Here's kind of our NASCAR slide, just showing you some of uh, the clients that we've worked with and organizations that we've worked with uh, throughout the years. And again, uh, both Bob and myself uh, have a strong passion for, for the, the movement to the cloud, and so we want to continue to um, look into all of the updates on a monthly basis, really go through them and test them, um, so that at the end of each implementation, um, you know, everyone, you know, is ready to go and can kind of use our testing feedback uh, to better help move to the, the new enhancements. So before we get started with this month's release and some of the components that uh, were, were actually implemented as part of that release, just wanted to do a quick follow-up on some questions that we had last month. So the first question that we had was related to um, defining applications through SmartView, uh, leveraging some of the new extensions there. So the specific question were, um, are admins able to load data using the downloadable Excel templates too? So the answer to that question is yes. So you can really maintain and manage pretty much all aspects of your application directly through SmartView now from that end user, kind of power user perspective or administrator for your application. So some, some good uh, positive movement there. Um, the second question was around um, the strategic modeling enhancement from last month, and is that available in standard applications? So unfortunately, no, it's only available in the enterprise edition, so EPBCS, and we can kind of touch on that throughout uh, today's webinar a little more, uh, but you'll notice in some of the screenshots are taken directly from EPBCS applications. So strategic modeling is really actually kind of a new um, module, if you will, of EPBCS, you know, similar to projects, financials, uh, you know, CapEx and workforce. So let's get into, uh, you know, today's webinar here. And, you know, as we normally do, just give a quick overview of exactly what PBCS is. Um, so, you know, PBCS is Oracle's um, you know, industry-leading uh, planning, budgeting, cloud services, you know, really providing end users with customized reports um, you know, simplified um, interfaces that allow for better, um, you know, driver inputs, as well as even some dashboarding capability here. So really a fully integrated solution to, you know, process your, your planning, budgeting, cloud solution there. And we do want to just point out, you know, don't forget about the Enterprise Edition as well. So de de depending on your, your organization's needs, um, you know, this can be a good option as well. Again, the Enterprise Edition really just comes with additional functionality and some prepackaged modules uh, around financials, uh, projects, workforce, and CapEx, and as of last month, now strategic modeling. So let's get into why you're here for today. Let's talk about the new features for July's release. Um, so this is our, um, you know, our release readiness guide, our table of contents for, for this month. So we're going to kind of go through these one by one and talk about them a little bit. And if there are any questions, you know, feel free to bring them up at the end of today's webinar. So before we get into the first enhancement here, just wanted to talk about the, the schedule for this last month. So uh, all of the release components were pushed to our test environment on July 7th, um, and then pushed to our production environments on July 21st. Um, interesting to point out, we did actually, um, from an eCapital standpoint, delay our release again, just to see um, you know, how responsive Oracle was to that. And we were able to push our release a few weeks ahead again. So um, you know, just a good um, you know, messaging there, or a reminder that if there are key business processes or you know, quarter close activities, year-end activities, you know, that you don't want to leave yourself open for risk, you know, you can choose to push these releases. So as always, you know, it, it seems to be a common theme so far, at least for the last few months, um, they continue to release, you know, a new optimized EPM automate utility. Um, and also with that new utility comes some new functionality and some new commands. So this month they have a clear cube command, um, which allows you to customize some of the clearing opportunities you know, with EPM automate. Um, so you kind of kind of see the, the snippet there. Um, as well as an example of the syntax and kind of some usage there. Um, and so, you know, another good function here. So the library of functions are continuing to grow. Um, you know, this one specifically around clear queue is allowing you to um, actually uh, delete specific data from input and reporting cubes. So not just from a BSO cube perspective, you can actually uh, customize how you want to clear from an ASO perspective as well. And I did want to just remind people, so, you know, if you're ever logged in, you know, kind of if you're looking at the simplified interface, you know, where your username is, kind of on the top right, if you drop that arrow down, you can see a downloads button. You know, that's probably the easiest way to actually get to downloading EPM Automate in the newest versions. Um, you know, they also have SmartView, uh, the predictive planning uh, 
utility, all that good stuff. So if you ever want to download anything that's related to, you know, PBCS or ePBCS, that's probably the most efficient way to do that. Um, so just wanted to point that out here. You know, through that interface, they have an option for Windows and Linux, which is nice. Um, and then I also wanted to point out, I've just been playing around with this on my own a little bit. Uh, notice that the, the, the documentation behind EPM Automate has continued to grow as well. Um, so they have some nice things now where they literally list out every single command and they list whether it's valid in PBCS, ePBCS, you have CCS, and actually even goes on and on into some of the new tax applications and things like that too. So really going to be a continued um, approach at some of the automation um, and you know, integration leveraging EPM Automate moving forward. Along the same lines here, uh, um, there was a new REST API function that uh, was a part of this release as well. Um, that was uh, on a related note is the ClearQ uh, function here. So just some, some brief examples uh, and kind of the snippet here um, of exactly what we're doing. Same overall philosophy as our prior slide. So basically it's allowing you to um, be able to call um, you know, your clear cube command and, and actually uh, facilitate some of that uh, automation there. So sticking with the theme of data clears here, um, if you are doing it from the UI itself and not so much from the back end, you know, using EPM Automate, um, they do have some enhancements here to the interface. So if you were to go into you know, your application overview screen, uh, under actions, you'll see that there's a clear cube option there. Go ahead and click uh, clear cube. And then if uh, you look at the interface that pops up here, you now have some different options here. So if you look on the left screenshot, that's really more looking at a BSO example. So you have uh, different options there for what you want to clear. You can also clear the relational data from a planning perspective now too, you know, under that clear option. So supporting details, comments, um, S-based data, document attachments. So that, that is new to this release as well. So you know, if you had comments linked to cells, you can clear that along with the actual S-based data itself. Um, the screenshot on the right is actually showing what you would see from an ASO perspective. So you can go in there and clear partial data and define kind of the different slices that you want to clear, you know, similar to, um, you know, some of the clears you could have done like in uh, the S-based administrative services in the past for an ASO queue. So some good functionality here, I think, uh, making it more uh, nimble as a whole, whether you're using the UI uh, or if you're automating things in the background. Uh, the next piece here, kind of a small piece of functionality, but it is kind of nice, um, probably from Oracle's perspective as well. Um, you can run an updated provisioning report, um, again, by going to Tools and Access Controls. And right from the top now, it'll tell you the number of users that you have provisioned for your application. So if you as an administrator are ever getting asked questions through, you know, maybe some auditing exercises or things like that, uh, you can very easily run this report and get the full number of users that you have provisioned. Um, one nice piece here that I found, um, if you can actually export to Excel, and I was actually surprised the, the formatting was actually really nice. So if you look there, that's without uh, me parsing through the file or moving anything around. So uh, good that it was smart enough to kind of, uh, you know, delimit that stuff correctly. So it actually um, shows up in that CSV file right away in a readable format. So yeah, just some, some nice functionality there to very quickly be able to see the number of users you have and also be able to maintain some of this stuff in Excel. The next piece is something that we've covered in the past a little bit. Um, they're continuing to add functionality to uh, overall navigation flow um, functionality here. So, um, you know, if you go to tools, navigation flow, um, you now have a new button that is called add existing card or cluster. So in the past, when you were customizing the different navigation flows that you had in your application, you know, trying to make uh, the simplified interface more user friendly and limit, you know, some of those cards or icons that, you know, you would never use. Um, you know, this is a good way to do that. And in this enhancement here for the July release, it allows us to actually add in other icons or other cards or clusters that other users may have added that we may find benefits to and want to add to maybe our customized view. And as long as the security, you have access to the same uh, overall um, slice of the application as the person that created it, um, you should have no problem adding it there. So in this example here, you'll see that I'm just trying to customize my own here. Uh, this favorite report was already added, so I can go into that navigation flow drop-down menu, and that's where I can actually select any of the customized navigation flows and add them to my own. So that favorite report was one that was added under SM flow, and I'm now adding it under you know, my own RK flow there. So, so kind of cool. You know, I think uh, you know, as you continue to develop use cases for the customized navigation flow, I think this is a, an important one to consider. You know, if someone in a security group, um, you know, links a new card that, you know, the rest of the, the folks in the group want to take advantage of, very easy to add that to their customized flow. 
So the next piece um, for the July release that we'll talk about today um, is a little bit more of a larger enhancement, I would say. So uh, I believe it was in the December release, potentially the November release, um, the predictive planning client uh, was actually rolled out on the web only. And so they've just recently uh, rolled out a new Excel version of this too. So this will allow you to, to actually download the, the new extension for, for smart new use. More importantly, though, they've enhanced the web uh, version of predictive planning, which is really where you're getting your most bang for your buck for PBCS. So on-prem planning applications have the, the SmartView extension. They do not have the web-based uh, view of this. So this is something that is uh, only available through ePBCS or PBCS here. So some of the new functionality that they've re released is, I'm going to go through these kind of one by one here. The first one is adjusting future values. So in that first screenshot in the top left, you're going to see we're just looking at the, the predictive uh, grid there, so none of the historicals. Um, I have highlighted the, the red line, so that's specifically our forecast working. Um, if you notice, there's going to be now data points that are recognized throughout the line. I can now grab a data point and move it up or down in the predictive planning interface, and that will actually change my numbers in, in the database as well. So just a nice, easy way to be able to change some of your forecasting um, you know, based on trends that we're defining uh, through these charts and graphs. So just kind of a streamlined process there, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, you also have the ability to zoom into just the predictive area. So, you know, as I'm kind of illustrating with that first screenshot, you know, the majority of what was initially shown with predictive planning through the web is really our historical data set. And then the predictive piece is probably maybe one-fourth of the interface itself. There's now a zoom button where it will basically take your interface and have it be the entire uh, kind of predictive piece, just to kind of spread that out so that you can, uh, you know, kind of customize more of where you want to start some of that uh, movement if you choose to adjust future values and things like that. So kind of a nice functionality piece there. Uh, the next one, along the same lines, um, you can now maximize the entire screen or the entire uh, user interface into basically uh, one screen. So um, before this release, uh, there's a lot of different buttons that you had to press um, to get different uh, context for your reporting. In this case, when you maximize, you're pretty much showing the full gambit across the board here. So uh, just kind of a nice one-stop shop to be able to kind of have almost a dashboard here that kind of shows you what's going on in general with your, your predictions versus your historical data. And this last piece is a, a new piece of functionality with predictive planning as well. Um, this is allowing you the ability to add in a growth curve. So by default, that growth curve is going to be 2%, um, but we can change that. So by adding in that growth curve or enabling it, and you can do that by just uh, selecting the, the radio button there, the check mark for the future, um, and then go into that little pencil icon, and that's where you can actually adjust your growth rate um, before it's added on to your, to your predictive planning interface. Once you've added it to, you can always modify that growth curve at any time, so it's not like a set it and forget it. Uh, it can be kind of a living piece of, of your predictive analysis. So um, really some nice functionality overall with predictive planning, I think. Um, clearly they're trying to move people more to the web to, to leverage some of this functionality that's not necessarily available um, in the same type of format and ease of use that it is on the, uh, the Excel extension there. So, you know, those are some of the um, main ones. And then, yeah, they did do some small enhancements to the chart settings here as well. Um, so in this case, we can actually modify what you want to include with, within the interface. So, for example, you know, do you want to highlight seasonality or do you want that to not be explicitly pointed out, you know, within the interface? Um, so just some nice options there. Uh, but overall, I think good improvements to the predictive planning uh, web interface, and they're, they're, they're clearly continuing to um, invest time in this from Oracle standpoint. So we look forward to, to future releases here that include predictive planning enhancements. So with that, I think I will hand it over to, to Bob now, and he'll cover the rest of the enhancements uh, as part of the July release. Thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, so continuing with more of our, uh, our standard uh, application type enhancements, uh, another one that we now have available to us is we're now going to be allowed to have commas in our member names. Uh, and more specifically, if we're leveraging data management to load data and maintain mappings, uh, it's now no longer going to choke on a comma that, that's, that's in a member name. Uh, you know, obviously a caveat to this uh, to think about as you're going through this is if you're getting comma delimited files and they don't have any other, you know, barrier between, uh, you know, double quotes around a member name or something like that to distinguish. You know, something very important to keep in mind is that it can, you know, affect that file that you're going to try to load into your application, but as long as you're not using that kind of delineation in your data files that you're looking to bring in, you should now be able to leverage commas in those member names if, if you uh, feel the need to do so. So our next 
next feature here is related to our work in FR Studio, uh, our financial reporting studio. So uh, again, uh, you're definitely going to want to leverage the web version of the studio to have this. Uh, I know Ryan and I did not actually check this out for your uh, downloaded desktop version, but I would not be surprised if this option was not there for that. So definitely go to the web as you're looking at any new functionality within FR. Uh, but what they're trying to add on here, uh, if you notice in that, in that red box there with the arrow, in the past you could always export your uh, reports to HTML format, to PDF format. Uh, they're actually adding a Excel format to this as well. So it's actually going to lay that grid layout in the Excel format. Uh, unfortunately for this release, I was really excited to test this out and see how this would work. Unfortunately, that option was great in every report that I tried to run this for. I even tried creating new reports, and I, I just I could not get this functionality to work. So I have some questions around, you know, why that option is grayed out. If there's something special you need to do within the report, so I actually did open up a ticket with Oracle. Uh, I'm hoping to get a response from them, hopefully by our next uh, release here, to kind of give some information out and make sure we can leverage that. So, you know, as you know, as many of us in finance that, that use this tool are, we we like Excel. We want to be in Excel, so I think this would be a nice feature to just be able to preview some of those reports. Uh, in our tool of choice when it comes to reporting. So hopefully more to come next month on this release. And that wraps up our standard uh, application features. So the remaining three we're going to have are going to be only for those of us that have the, uh, the enterprise licenses. So again, these are going to be focused around our projects, financials, workforce, and CapEx modules uh, that are, you know, those pre-developed models that, that you can enable through uh, that, that enterprise option. So the first one here is within, within the financials module, uh, there's actually a new section in your enable area of that. So the place that you had went in and uh, added, you know, all the different features or account types you're going to plan to make up your financials. Uh, there's now another option there and it's just called weekly planning. So you're able to come in here, you're able to check that checkbox. It's going to ask you what, what type of distribution you have. Are you 445? Are you, you know, 554? You know, they're going to ask you what that distribution is going to be that you as an organization are leveraging. And basically what will happen is if we look over to the right, it'll just create all of those weekly members for you. So it's going to create a week one through 52, which you now can leverage within your web forms and your application to do planning if you need to go down below that monthly level. Uh, and then another nice feature is, is that you know, we still have that rolling, uh, those rolling processes within our enterprise application. So you're able to, after you put these members into your application, you're able to easily maintain them in your web forms, uh, you know, to roll accordingly. Uh, so a really nice feature to just be able to come and enable, kind of get all those members created and, uh, you know, be able to start to leverage a more detailed time period planning process that, that your organization may need to leverage. Another uh, new feature here is going to be with a new workforce workforce dashboard that, that is available. So this will only be available uh, if you enabled both projects and workforce after this release went, went into production. So for those of us that are leveraging projects and workforce uh, and we don't want to go, you know, through the effort of re-enabling those things, that this, uh, this would not be available uh, to you. Basically, you have to actually have re-enabled since July 21st. And again, you have to have enabled both projects and workforce as it works across both of those things. And what it essentially does is it created a three, you know, grid dashboard where it's going to give you uh, a utilization by, you know, a project and then how utilized the project is going to be for employee. It also gives you utilization per individual employee uh, on that dashboard. And it also gives you the ability to kind of to move uh, an employee from one project to the next. Uh, so again, because of that cross functionality between all of those modules, you have to have all of them enabled and uh, you also need to have enabled it after the release. So, now, if there's questions on how to re-enable some of those applications to kind of pick up this new feature or possibly future features, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to either Ryan or myself. We'd be happy to give a quick uh, conversation with you to kind of highlight some of those, uh, how to enable some of those features. Finally, the last feature here is again related to that financial module. So a lot like, maybe maybe not exactly like the, uh, the downloadable template process that we had talked about last month, but in a similar fashion, you're now able to download data templates from that financial module. So you're actually able to just go in there, you go to where you would uh, configure your financials. You know, just have an action button and you have download uh, data load templates and it'll actually give you, you know, four different files. So one for uh, balance sheet, cash flow expense, and then finally revenue. It'll actually give you all those files. And for those of us that have worked uh, in EPBCS and, and understand how it can at times be difficult to understand exactly where 
to load all of your data to kind of have the whole module work together within itself. So it's actually a really nice feature to just help give you that data laid out in a grid that's in Excel, that's common to limited, that you can kind of parse out to look the way you need it to look, and help to give you an easy way to maybe search for you know, a certain account and find out where everything is loaded for those things uh, and basically get it up and running. It, it can just be a really nice time saver and a, and a really good way to try to get to understand the data that's in your application, uh, you know, in, in a better way for that. So really a nice feature, uh, especially as we continue to learn and grow within our uh, out-of-box modeling that we enable. So that wraps up all of the individual enhancements uh, this month. Uh, we do have a couple support updates we wanted to pass out. So the first one here, it was actually a bug that, that we at eCapital found as we were just testing the releases this month. Uh, and what we found was if you are importing your metadata locally from just like your, your desktop or your machine that you're working with, uh, you actually are going to get some errors, uh, you know, saying that it basically can't find that file from that, from basically your local location. Uh, luckily for us, uh, we, again, so taking a step back, we, we contacted Oracle about this, told them it's a bug. Uh, you, know, you know, we're not sure exactly what would have caused this bug. Uh, we just want to make them aware so they have the opportunity to make a fix for next month. Uh, but luckily there is a workaround. As long as you upload that file you want to load for your metadata to that inbox, uh, you're not, you're not going to have problems uploading your metadata. So uh, we just want to call us out for those of us that are loading the data locally from files. Uh, just an extra step, at least for this month, until this bug gets resolved, uh, to just load that into the, uh, the inbox and then load it from there into your application. So you won't find this anywhere on the release. This is something that just we at eCapital found. Uh, as a bug for, for this month. One, one here, uh, not, a, not a new one, this is common, we've been talking about this for at least a year I would say, is we the removal of support for that standard interface. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet, get into that simplified interface. All the features are coming out in there, pretty much everything we've talked about today and the last year are all really hitting that simplified interface, so uh, don't wait, get, get into that simplified interface as soon as you can. Reporting Desktop Studio, so a little bit of an update on this. Uh, they technically are going to extend their support for the desktop client version. It was supposed to be done a couple months ago. They're extending it through 2017. I'm, I don't know why Oracle extended more support for this. I would say, uh, in Ryan and my experience working with the, the web studio, uh, there's really no reason to not get there. But this is another situation where, you know, we've been talking about this for, for several months now. Uh, go ahead and take that, that plunge into the into that, the web studio, and I, I, I can guarantee you're not going to be disappointed when you do that. Uh, another one here, uh, which is through starting in September here, so uh, real close now, is going to be that, that integration between uh, Oracle Fusion and our, 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 plan, our PBCS applications is a flat file management between those two. Uh, is no longer going to be supported starting in September. They really want you to get in there and start using that data management, which again, free feature comes with their subscription. Uh, you know, again, some of these integrations, I know for some of us as we start using different aspects of the application can, can be burdensome. Well, if you are a user that's, that's leveraging both Fusion Project products and uh, the Planning Budgeting Cloud service, please reach out. Uh, you know, we're running out of time here to kind of make sure that we can integrate this in a new way for you uh, to make sure you're compliant with, with Oracle's processes going forward. Finally, the last support update here, uh, and this is really important for those of us that have that out-of-box workforce functionality, it's very important, uh, is that they are no longer going to allow custom members in the property dimension. So they call out in the release notes that they never intended for users to be able to leverage this as a dimension where you could create custom members. They've realized that when, when, when implementations are doing this, it can, it can hurt the performance of the application pretty significantly. So they're actually just going ahead and they're going to remove the functionality altogether. And what they're saying you need to do as part of the release is you need to find new places for those custom members. So well, there can be a lot involved in making that change happen. And you know, when you start changing dimensionality with your members uh, and where you're storing that data and where that those members are being referenced on reports or web forms or wherever that may be, you know, this can be this can be a you know an undertaking to kind of fix this. So uh, anyone out there that has that uh, workforce enabled and they're leveraging that and they've used that property dimension to create custom members, uh, time is now. They're retiring it in August. I guess, uh, the ability to do that. So the time is now. Get in there. Start making a plan for how you're going to reclassify that data. How you're going to, if if you need to, uh, reclassify reports or anything that may be. Uh, and again, for a change like this. So don't hesitate to reach out to Ryan or myself, and we would definitely be able to get some insight on best practices on how to kind of set up a, a little mini project to do something like that.
Um, so that is our webinar for this month. So uh, we appreciate everyone joining today. Uh, we hope you found it helpful. We, you know, we're taking this time to try to dig in these enhancements a little bit, try to give it to you in a half hour, 45 minutes, and so you can know what's coming in on your release uh, and be you know, that much more informed in your environment and what changes from month to month. So uh, with that, I think we got two questions coming in here. So, so uh, Ryan, I'll, you want to? Yeah, I can read these off here. Thanks, Bob. So the first question, and Bob, I'll actually let you handle this question. Um, looks like uh, the question is, have you had any issues moving towards the simplified interface? Yeah, and that's a question that we hear a lot from uh, not only people that have been maybe early adopters into the cloud and maybe weren't implemented in the simplified interface, but even people that are coming from on-prem into uh, the cloud version where the simplified interface was not an option. Uh, I, I really have not gotten really much of any negative feedback other than the fact that there's some change management and understanding that how you as an administrator or an end user are going to click through your application uh, to get in certain things, like that, that is definitely change and I'm not going to you know, say that that has not changed, but once that flow and navigation is understood and it does seem to be, in a, it's laid out in a much you know, easier to follow uh, manner basically in that simplified interface, people seem to really enjoy it, they seem to love it, and really we've, we've got a lot of positive feedback on how that simplified interface looks and feels. Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure. I think it's the better way to go. So the second question here, I can take this one. Um, have you have you seen any clients customize their navigation flows yet? So funny that this question comes up. We were actually just talking about this before uh, today's webinar, where we do have uh, one of our colleagues who's on a client right now, where they have just started to customize um, the navigation flow setup uh, for the end users, and they said that it's been working well, and it's actually almost found a way to kind of replace task lists from an old school perspective. So I think a good way to kind of think out of the box there and uh, kind of reposition some of your um, interface management, if you will. So um, we have found so far at least the navigation flow and uh, customizations to be helpful. So it looks like those are the only two questions we have for, for this month's webinar, but uh, some good questions there. Hopefully have shared some context and uh, shared some insight there. Um, I think that's about all we got for this month. So we thank you again. We look forward to uh, the August release. See you next month.